Combat aviation is one of the key ways to deter unwanted guests, and advanced fighters, in turn, allow you to gain significant air superiority over the enemy. Today, we'll be telling you about the latest modification to the most coveted fighter for US partners, the F-35 Lightning II. The F-35 Lightning II is an American all-weather multi-role stealth fighter created as part of the Joint Strike Fighter JSF program. A key aspect of this setup that the US Army specifically designated was international participation of partner countries. Back in 1997, Boeing and Lockheed Martin were chosen as the main contenders to develop a future fighter, having later presented their respective prototypes, the X-32 and X-35. Initially, the McDonnell Douglas team and Northrop Grumman specialists were also participating in the competition, but later joined the guys from Lockheed Martin. In October of 2001, Lockheed was declared the winner and awarded the System Development and Demonstration SDD contract, while Pratt & Whitney was awarded the F-135 SDD contract for the JSF program. However, a peculiar incident came with the name of the fighter. Lockheed Martin expected the aircraft to be codenamed F-24 and was surprised by the F-35 designation which didn't match the standard U.S. Department of Defense numbering. However, this is precisely what was determined for their fighter by the JSF program manager, Major General Mike Hugh. As for the nickname Lightning II, it was assigned to the newest fighter in honor of the Lockheed P-38 Lightning during World War II, having been given some time after the F-35A made its first flight in December of 2006, although some Air Force pilots still call this aircraft Panther. The F-35 was first conceived as an affordable fifth-generation fighter that could be purchased in various versions for the Air Force and Navy. Initially, the Marine Corps planned to roll out its own aircraft to replace the AV-8 8B Harrier. But in 1994, Congress decided to combine the efforts of the Air Force and the Navy in order to avoid higher costs for developing, purchasing, and operating the future apparatus. As a result, the United States immediately received three different versions of the brand new F 35s F 35A, with the usual CTOL takeoff and landing for the US Air Force and other countries to replace the F 15, F 16, and A-10 attack aircraft. F-35B, short takeoff and vertical landing, STOVL for Marine Corps. F-35C, modification for aircraft carriers or CV version. As the JSF program moved from prototypes to the development phase, the design of the X-35 changed markedly. The forward fuselage was lengthened by five inches to provide more space for avionics and the horizontal stabilizers were moved two inches aft to maintain both balance and control. The non-diverter supersonic air intake changed the shape of the hood from a four-way to a three-way, and was also moved 30 inches to the rear. The top cover of the fuselage was also left primarily unchanged, raised just one inch along the center line to accommodate the armament compartments. The addition of various components did, of course, affect the fighter's weight. In 2003, it was decided to increase the weapons compartments, thereby ensuring unification between the aircraft variants. The overall weight gain was up to 2,200 pounds, more than 8%, causing all STOVL key performance parameter KPP thresholds to fail. Because of this, they even had to form the STOVL Weight Attack Team SWAT, to reduce said weight gain. Some proposed changes included more engine thrust, thinner airframe elements, smaller weapon bays, vertical stabilizers, less thrust delivered to the transverse strut outlets, as well as a redesign of the wing interface, electrical components, and airframe directly behind the cockpit. Many SWAT developments have been successfully applied to all three future fighters. By September 2004, the weight of the F-35B had decreased by more than 3,000 pounds and the F-35A and F-35C by 2,400 pounds and 1,900 pounds respectively. However, all these innovations would not come cheaply and increased spending by 6.2 billion, causing an 18-month delay to the project. Generally speaking, in the process of forming the F-35, a tremendous amount of work was done on various flaws, since the first tests had revealed serious issues. For example, premature cracking of the airframe, an unreliable brake hook, the vulnerability of fuel tanks to lightning strikes, problems with display and helmets, 
and many other basic ailments from which the device was soon cured. The development of the Lightning 2 software had also been repeatedly delayed due to unprecedented volume and complexity even for Lockheed's highly skilled team of specialists. By 2009, the program was 30 months behind schedule, with all three options having only 25% common parts, well below the expected unification of 70%. As a result, instead of the planned 200 billion, the JSF program costs more than 406.5 billion, with an estimated cost of about 1.5 trillion for the fighter's life cycle up until 2070. Delays in development, operational testing, and evaluation had unfortunately taken their toll on the project as well, pushing back full-scale production to 2023. Additionally, by 2010, nine years after Lockheed received the JSF contract, the price of one F-35 had already increased by 89% as compared to initial estimates. The aircraft software was developed in six releases called Blocks. 1A and 1B were the initial training of pilots and presence of a multi-level security system. Block 2A improved fighter training capabilities, and 2B became the first operational block planned for the USMC, being the Initial Operational Capability IOC. Block 2I retained the capabilities of the 2B predecessor with new equipment, and was planned for the USAF IOC. The final version of Block 3F, in its turn, had full flight range and all basic combat capabilities. Along with the fresh software release, each block also included avionics hardware upgrades and various aircraft hardware improvements, made possible through intensive flight and structural testing. Apparently, enemies also want to know the secrets of the F-35 software. Therefore, as in the case of the F-22, the software part of the fighter was repeatedly subjected to cyber attacks and attempts to steal various technologies. However, specialists still managed to deflect them, not only blocking potential vulnerabilities, but also maintaining the integrity of the logistical supply chains. Modernization of the F-35 is set to take place regularly, and the first improvement program, called Continuous Capability Development and Delivery C2D2, started back in 2019 and will last until at least 2024. Its next priority is Block 4 which will integrate additional weapons, including those unique to international customers, upgrade avionics, improve ESM capabilities, and add support for Rover, remotely operated video enhanced receiver. In preparing C2D2, the team will pay even more attention to the development of Agile in order to further accelerate the release of certain innovations as much as possible. In 2018, the Air Force Lifecycle Management Center, AFLCMC, awarded contracts to General Electric as well as Pratt & Whitney to develop more powerful and efficient adaptive cycle engines for the F-35, using research from the Adaptive Engine Transmission Program, AETP. The F-35 Adaptive Engine Replacement FAER, program was released in 2022 to install adaptive cycle engines in the fighter by 2028. Among foreign buyers, the group most interested in the F-35 was the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, which ordered 147 F-35s, of which 105 F-35A and 42 F-35B. In second place would be Turkey, which had planned to acquire about 100 F-35s. But due to the country's exclusion from the F-35 program after it adopted the Russian S-400 air defense system, even the four F-35A fighters sent to Luke Air Force Base for training were halted, having never reached Turkey. Due to the purchase of the S-400, the US may soon exclude India from the list of potential buyers of the F-35 as well. Furthermore, due to concerns regarding espionage, Washington may refuse to sell these fighters to the UAE and reassesses the prospects of selling the F-35 in the Middle East outside of Israel. By the way, on the subject of Israel, by March of 2022, the United States had delivered to Israel 33 of 50 planned F-35I Adir fighters, which are modified F-35As. Initially, the United States refused to allow the country to introduce its own electronic warfare systems into the aircraft, but over time, they dropped this ultimatum. Among the innovations for the F-35I, it's worth noting the Israeli jamming system. 
new air-to-air -air missiles, and guided bombs installed in the internal weapons bay. Considering that the enemies could eventually overcome the F-35 stealth to a partial degree in the next 10 years, Israel insisted on using its own electronic warfare systems. Israel Aerospace Industries proposed the concept of a two-seat F-35, which turned out to be a no less interesting option including for the air forces of other countries. Additionally, IAI had created conformal fuel tanks, having recently reported significant progress in extending the range of its F-35Is. Earlier, Lockheed Martin also considered extending the flight range by installing two 600-gallon drop tanks under the wings of the fighter, but this would have greatly affected its stealth properties, so the idea was temporarily abandoned. And if we're talking about the total number of F-35 deliveries, then it's over 500 units to 9 different countries, these being operated at 23 different air bases around the globe. This is more than the fleet of Russian Su-57s and Chinese J-20s combined. Not to mention the thousands of F-35s still on order that will come to be the backbone of the US Air Force. In an effort to provide the most effective weapons for their F-35s, US pilots spend thousands of hours in the air testing various new toys. Just recently, information surfaced that the US Air Force had signed contracts with the following three defense companies, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and L3 Harris. This was to develop the new short-range air-to-ground missile stand-in attack weapon. SIAW, which is to be added to the existing F-35 arsenal. This missile will be able to hit enemy ground targets while it's in air defense zone, target ballistic missiles, surface-to-air missiles, and other strategically important objects. Each of the companies received $2 million to start development, and the first purchases of missiles are expected to come as early as 2023. But we've saved one of the F-35's main trump cards for last. What we're talking about is this so-called beast mode. The fighter's ability to increase its total ammunition from 5,700 to 22,000 pounds by installing ammunition on its external pylons. Such a payload would, of course, significantly increase the radar visibility of the aircraft, thus reducing or completely eliminating its stealth. But such a setup is intended to ensure a significant increase in aviation power, following the establishment of air superiority. The exact type of weapon set for beast mode will be determined by the mission at hand. For air-to-ground missions, the F-35 will most likely be equipped with two AIM-120 AMRAAM BVR medium-range air-to-air missiles, two AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles, six 2,000-pound JDAM bombs, and a standard internal 25mm cannon. For air-to-air -air missions, the Army will likely prefer 14 AMRAAMs and two Sidewinders. That being said, it's important to note that all versions of the F-35 come with the underwing hardpoints needed to stuff the aircraft to the brim with all kinds of weapons. US allies are well aware of the prospects for total superiority of the F-35 in beast mode. The Royal Australian Air Force has already tested it during the Arnhem Thunder 21 exercises. And in the spring of 2021, the F-35B of the Italian Navy was tested in this mode, having been paired with the aircraft carrier ITS Cavour, using inert GBU-12 bombs. Despite all the challenges along the way, the F-35 has demonstrated greater reliability and shorter maintenance times than older tactical aircraft. And according to Lockheed, 93% of its parts perform better than previously predicted. Even in the midst of a pandemic, the Lockheed team proved that one could still bring life to the concept of a stealthy unified fighter, capable of covering the needs of major US and allied military organizations. The costs have gone down, fighter capabilities are only going up, and its overall performance has been surprising Congress. What more can you wish for? What do you think? Will the F-35s be able to gain a foothold in the sky before 2070, or will they be replaced by the NGAD program? Be sure to tell us your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.